Let's welcome back in for our continuing conversation now, the uh, Deputy Communications Director for the Republican National Committee, Sarah Isker Flores, who is checking in via Skype from Washington and from Newsmax, New York, our good friend Ellis Hennigan, the columnist for Newsday. Uh, so Sarah, that non-answer, is uh, that another brick in the wall against uh, Allison Grimes in Kentucky? Oh, I think this is the end of her race as a viable candidate. Chuck Todd this morning said this was a disqualifying answer. The one thing I will say is it goes to the larger point of just how toxic this president is to Democrats on the ballot. They can't even answer whether they voted for him, let alone support his policies. Well, now, you heard what uh, Sarah had to say there, Ellis. Uh, what, what, what are you going to tell us about Allison? At least she had message discipline going after Mitch McConnell. What, what, what do you say? <laughs> Well, first of all, it's a cringe-inducing answer. I mean, let's concede that. It's, it, it's, the, it's the wrong answer and uncomfortable, and uh, she's got to do better with it next time. What's interesting to me, though, is that uh, here you've got the number one Republican in the Senate. The polls all show this as a, still a very, very tight race. Uh, I don't know who's going to win it. I don't think Sarah really knows who's going to win it, uh, nor, does, nor does Chuck Todd, J.D., or even you. It, it's surprising this late in a game with so much money coming into Kentucky that she remains a, a, a genuine, genuine threat to Senator McConnell, and, and it's going to go right down to the wire. I think it's a pretty exciting race, honestly. Well, uh, I know it's hard to believe, but maybe stepping outside um, partisanship for just a second, historically, uh, recently, uh, Senate leaders have had a tough time. I, I think to Harry Reid in Nevada, yeah. it went right down to the wire for Harry. So is this really that much of a surprise, Sarah? I think that... Allison uh, Lundgren Grimes is doing better than she should because she refuses to answer questions. Voters don't know who she is. And so they have been willing to hear her out. And I think that last night's answer really confirmed she's not going to tell you what she stands for. And she's certainly not going to tell you the truth about what she stands for. And so that's why I think this is the end of that race. Um, and and Democratic Come candidates on, across Sarah, the country Sarah. might learn from it and actually tell voters what they're for and what they stand for instead of just hiding behind non-answers and talking points. All right, go ahead, Ellis. So, so, yes, I mean, sir, that's just a slam. I mean, I understand that, that that's not an analysis. Let me let me let me see if I can give it to oh. you better. Um, it, it's a very tight race. McConnell is in a squeeze, right? I mean, he has a ton of power in Washington, but that doesn't carry a lot of weight at home when many voters, many Republican, particularly Tea Party voters and social conservatives, they consider being entrenched and powerful in Washington more a negative than a positive. So if McConnell's going to win, he's got to thread a very delicate needle, and, and he may win. I mean. Uh, Kentucky is a state that leans Republican. He ought to win, but it's proving to be surprisingly difficult for it. We'll see whether Grimes has what it takes to close it. She may not, but it, it's not simply a case of everybody loves McConnell and that Grimes is just a liar that nobody believes. That, that's, that's just not a fair analysis of the No, race. she's an empty basket that she's trying to let other people... Well, you don't people like her. I get that. <laughs> I don't like people who don't say what they're for and what their actual policies are and try to just skate through into the Senate. And right, we will and Mitch have to, McConnell's a huge success, we, and everybody loves him, right? <laughs> we will have to uh, to end it right there because there's a four-letter word that intervenes: T I M E. Our time is up. Sarah Isker Flores from Washington D.C., Ellis Hinnikin from Newsmax, New York. To you both, our thanks, and we'll talk again before the midterms. Don't you go anywhere because there is a more ahead on this edition of America's Forum.